Hey, good evening, folks. <clears throat> Thank you for joining. This is going to be just a short video uh, because I just this is more of an encouraging video for any of you at any level of learning, of questioning the Bible, of studying outside the box, outside of tradition. Uh, you've heard it said, oh, you're taking that out of context. Well, uh, on Jesus Words Only, Doug Del Tonto had a video here recently, and uh, he had two very well-known authors debating each other. Learned men, a lot of followers, a lot of experience. Uh, I watch some of their videos off and on and glean what I can from them. But the one, when one presented some evidence, the other one did a general sur summary of the text of the chapters and then accused him of taking it out of context, and that's a dangerous thing. See, what I have found and am learning is when I'm talking to somebody, as soon as they say, you're taking it out of context, I now stop. Prove it to me. Pay the price. Explain it to me. Go back and show me the text. Show me the words. Show me the definitions of the words. Most of the time they won't do it. See, we have a thing where we esteem men who appear, men or women, who appear higher or more learned than we are, and we cower to them. But Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. It's his words, because his words is what the Father spoke. See? And so, I have been, what do you call it, not, not really affected anymore when people accuse me of taking it out of context. Because most of the time, they're not even interested in studying what they believe. They just parrot what they've been taught. See? They've never actually studied out what they believe. And so most of my videos and most of the stuff that I have, I have spent much time in study and in sorting out and trying to figure some of this stuff out. And I'm going to use an example to you because to this day, to this day, after four or five years now of working on this, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is always thrown at me. And I tell them, you are taking it out of context. You know the verse, all scripture is inspired, uh, inspired out by God, and is useful for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. First of all, I explain to them, if you go to any Greek sources or Greek Bibles that have the words underneath them, you'll find out the word is is not there. That man added that in. So you take the word out and say, all scripture inspired by Yahweh is profitable for doctrine. See how it changes it. And I can actually, I have written proof. I have papers on file that if they say, oh, I don't believe you, I can say, here, go look this up. Go look this up. Go see where on, on a Bible hub where it shows this. Or go look at the Hebrew Bible. Or go look at the Greek text under the Hebrew Matthew or different things. And then the next thing that I point out to them it's 2 Timothy 3.15. I say, please quote 2 Timothy 3.15, and they can't do that to me. They don't have no idea. I said, and wouldn't that make it context? Wouldn't 2 Timothy 3.15 right next to 16? I guess I'm sounding a little smart with this, but it, this is so blatant, obviously. From childhood, Timothy, you have been acquainted with the sacred holy writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through the faith in Yeshua and profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction, and so on and so forth. The New Testament wasn't around when Timothy was there. So the very verse before what they lift out of context proves that they're taking it out of context. Oh, he's, he, Paul must be prophesying. I've had all kinds of answers. But I, I said, if you don't accept what Paul says, so why would you listen to me? Why should I even bother arguing with you? See, there's times that you don't need to waste your time 
with some people. Yet some people, once you break through that wall, they have a little protective wall, and once you can put doubt in that wall and make them say, hmm, he is correct on what he says here. Maybe I should check into this. See, sometimes you got to break through that wall. Sometimes it takes time and a prayer for that person. See, so uh, I purpose to try not to accuse people of taking anything out of context. Unless I'm actually in a more of a one-to-one -one situation or I will question somebody. Well, look at the context of that. Maybe you should check that out. 2 Timothy 3.16, how can that imply the New Testament when Paul was writing it to Timothy and the only thing around was the Old Testament? I mean, isn't that reasonable to, if you believe what Paul says? So I just want to encourage you folks, you know, no matter what level you're at, level whatever, I, I don't know how else to say that. Um, you simply want the truth. I usually start that out. This weekend I'm going to be going to the prison. And I usually start it out with, I just simply want the truth, guys. I just want to know the truth. I want to find out. I don't want to be deceived. See, I want to search and question things out. Because I believe our Heavenly Father has the ability and the decency to say, hey, these guys are really searching for me with all their heart, all their mind, and all their strength, or all their soul, whatever it is. See, I think the Heavenly Father is very interested in people who are interested in Him. And that is one of the key things that keeps me going. I'm listening to Doug, uh, uh, right, or Brad, Brad on David uh, Nordstrom. He just had a video out. Because I've had a couple of people ask me about baptizing the, them and local people and stuff. They didn't want to go to a church. And I said, well, I have no problem with it, but I would need to do some more research on it because I, I haven't really looked that hard into that. I know what I personally believe, but I want to make sure it's scripturally sound. And so I'm watching Brad's uh, sharing right now. But I want to stop doing this video because uh, uh, I have another friend who has been, we're going to meet again hopefully next week, and uh, he's saying that he just can't even get a conversation started at church. And I told him the biggest thing is to start learning what Yeshua taught. What did our Lord Jesus teach? Study what he, he teaches. If they say something that's not what Jesus said, you don't have to go after Paul, Saul, the spatter of lies. All you have to do is start saying, that's what my Lord and Savior said. I, I believe what he says. See? So... Anyway, thanks again for listening, folks. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm still uh, praying. Uh, pray for me. I need prayer because I would like to find there's a building I'm working on right now, and I've already talked to the guy about maybe see if I could rent it for a Friday night Bible study. Saturday nights, a lot of times, people have their family times. So that's what we used to do all the time. So Friday nights, usually at the end of the week, and it's the beginning of the Sabbath, and I thought that might be a good time from 6 to 7.30 to have a have a little Bible study and started out with, you know, Yeshua is our soul teacher and and his words will, will last forever and, you know, go on like that, some basic principles and then build from there. So, Father, I am so grateful that you have many people that are out sharing. There's uh, another young lady that's just started up her channel and she knows how to do the computer a lot better than I do and I pray you'll bless her and, and speak to her heart. And, and Lord, you're raising up people because each one of us have our circle of influence. And Father, I believe that you hold us responsible for our circle of influence and help me to be the example and to live out the, in front of those people. Uh, even my granddaughter coming and mowing tonight, uh, she wants to earn a little money. Lord, I, I, I want to always be patient with her. She is my little Bible thumper. And uh, she... I, I don't know where she stands with you. I want her to, to know where she stands with you, Lord. It's not for me to judge, but on the other hand, I have to discern uh, for all my grandkids to come to know you somehow, some way. So, Father, continue to help us. We need your mercy. We need your spirit of wisdom and your guidance. In Yeshua's name, amen.